Hi, it's Charlie Minato from Halfflow.com, and today I am reviewing the HF Barcelona Melamine Grid Ashtray. It is a grid style ashtray, as the name implies. It is made of melamine. It is priced at $20. It is offered in these three colors, and I have a confession to make. I damaged one of the ashtrays, and it is no fault of the ashtray. So as you are seeing right now, I decided that I was going to light a roadside flare in our office. I wanted to figure out how airflow patterns are working in relation to one of our smoke eaters. And I set the flare on uh, this red ashtray and it managed to do that to uh, the ashtray. I guess we can move this up closer. So uh, as the instructions imply on the roadside flare, you should use them outside. They should never be used for indoor use. You certainly shouldn't put them on an ashtray. It actually burned the ground as well as the ashtray. And I suspect that if I was using a porcelain or a glass style ashtray, it would have been far more damage. I suspect that if it was a metal ashtray, it would have ended up with relatively the same results. Obviously a bit of a different style of burn because this is melamine and not metal. Um, but I don't think it is the fault of this ashtray. So with that confession out of the way, uh, these ashtrays debuted earlier this year, um, actually at TPE of all things. Uh, they are seven inches uh, in both length and width. It's a square. As you can see, the ashtray does protrude outwards from the bottom, so it's not a perfect 90 degree angle when it comes to these edges. And then up top, it's got 16 of these small openings, and then it's got the peaks and valleys, the idea being that you can take your cigar and rest it on one of the peaks and valleys and hopefully not drop your cigar while doing the review. And uh, the idea is that the ash falls through the openings so that way you don't have to see it. It falls into the bowl and the top piece is removable so you can easily or attempt to clean uh, the ashtray easily. I first saw this style of ashtray, which has been around for decades, at the Nat Sherman townhouse. And I always sort of associate these grid style ashtrays with the Nat Sherman ashtray. And I actually decided that I was going to track down one of the Nat Sherman ashtrays, which they do sell, albeit it's tough to find stores that carry them, um, and compare it to this ashtray. Because I wanted to see, you know, how the sort of iconic version, that being the Nat Sherman one, compares to the, the new take, which is this melamine version. So. Uh, here is, as we rearrange things, um, here is the, the HF Barcelona version, here is the Nat Sherman version. There are three differences. I'm sure you can spot two of them quite easily. So the first is that this comes with a wooden shell. Uh, the metal piece does remove from the shell. This is sort of the most boring version of the, the shell. There's a lot of other exotic or more exotic woods uh, that actually look like wood. This is wood. Um, but in terms of the, the ashtray itself, it, it, it's pretty much identical. Uh, the grid pattern is, I mean, legitimately pretty much identical. The only real difference, if I'm being quite honest, in terms of the, the mold is that on the Nat Sherman version, you can see there's some small circles uh, on the edges uh, where the, the molding device was, whereas on the HF Barcelona version, it's clean. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much identical. Um, obviously, this one is made of metal. This is made of melamine, which I'm gonna get to in a second. And the third is that this is $160. So it's eight times the price of the HF Barcelona. And once again, not a lot of stores seemingly carry this ashtray. I, I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, now seems like a great time to talk about melamine. So melamine is a composite material. I'm neither an expert in physics nor in chemistry, but uh, I've always understood melamine to be sort of the best of both worlds, particularly when it comes to ashtrays between metal and plastic. So in terms of metal, it, it obviously does not feel like metal. Um, one uh, really easily identifiable thing, and these have both been sitting on this table all afternoon. This is substantially cooler feeling to the touch than this is. Uh, but you would suspect this is metal more than you would suspect it's plastic. If you listen to it, doesn't really sound exactly the same as the metal ashtray, but it definitely doesn't sound like plastic. It can be painted, it can be formed into shapes, uh, including ones far more intricate than this. Um, and so it's got a lot of the same characteristics as both materials, uh, but in terms of the metal aspects, it is harder. Uh, and so we've dropped melamine from 12, 14 feet before, haven't had any cracks or shatters, um, whereas with plastic, that would definitely be a concern. It's also, and particularly in relation to ashtrays, this is a big thing, it's much more heat resistant. So uh, obviously, don't put a roadside flare on the ashtray. But if you're just gonna use a cigar, uh, these things work great. Uh, you're not gonna have any issues with the cigar burning it or anything like that. Interestingly enough, this Nat Sherman ashtray, which I believe is pewter, if you uh, smoke a, a cigar in it, 
it'll actually like change colors um, while the cigar is lit, the, the metal will, and then once it, it cools off, it, it goes back to being the silver color. Um, but no issues with that here. Um, and then in terms of its sort of plasticky attributes, uh, the big advantage is that it is lighter. So this ashtray, um, if you take this out and you weigh this, uh, this ashtray is 30% uh, lighter. Um, so not even counting the shell, uh, the metal is noticeably heavier. I suspect it's also quite a bit cheaper than uh, metal, um, certainly cheaper to ship because it doesn't weigh as much, um, but I'm guessing that it's also cheaper to, to make, particularly at higher volumes uh, where you're gonna have molds and things like that. So back to the actual ashtrays at hand. Um, I've been using these for more or less the last two months, uh, pretty much exclusively, and uh, I've definitely got some thoughts. They, they work you know, it's an ashtray, like it's not like a lighter where you're gonna have to worry about, you know, malfunctions and things like that per se. Uh, but there are some issues that I have with them, three of them in fact, and uh, I'll start with the first one. So uh, that is that these openings are not large enough, um, at least not for the modern cigar market. Uh, you can't fit a 50 ring gauge cigar through them. It seems like 47 is kind of right uh, where the cigar will actually go through it. But if you're smoking a cigar that's 52 ring gauge or below, uh, or smaller, uh, you probably aren't gonna have very many issues in terms of getting the ash to fall through these openings. If you go up to something like a 54, and certainly once you get close to 60 and above it, the ash is not gonna fall through the openings without uh, you basically smashing it in there. Um, it will just sit on top of the openings, as I'm sure you're seeing right now in B-roll. Um, and that leads to point number two, which is that things get quite a bit messy. So. Ideally, with these ashtrays, um, you would want to, uh, you know, smoke your cigar, and then you have the ash fall through the openings. And normally, when you're smoking a cigar in another ashtray, you're really only concerned in terms of making a mess whenever you pick up the cigar, take a puff, and put it back down. Obviously, if the, the cigar is over the ashtray, the ash falls into the bowl, and you're good. You just got to worry about that moment when it's not directly over the ashtray. In this particular instance, because the cigar is sitting on uh, this shelf essentially with holes in the bottom of it, you still can create mess just like this because unless it's sitting directly over an opening, if little specks of ash fall off and they do all the time, uh, then they will sit on top um, of the ashtray in these peaks and, and valleys. So uh, when I'm referring to that, you got these, these sort of inlets right here and then these pieces right here and they collect ash like crazy. Um, and so what uh, when you have a device that's made to be a basically cleaner version of it, so you don't have to see the ash because it goes in this bottom bowl part, but then the ash, you know, a, a whole bunch of it sticks up on top, it ends up completely defeating the purpose of using this style of ashtray to hide some of the mess, and it looks a lot messier. And I should point out that a cigar is only going to produce the volume of ash that's available to it. It's not like this cigar can produce more ash if it's in this ashtray or if it's in a stinky ashtray or if it's in a cup of water. It's gonna produce the same amount of ash, you know, obviously depending on how much I smoke it. Um, but the real question is, what does that ash look like when it falls into your ashtray? And in this particular instance, it looks a lot messier. And that leads to point number three and perhaps the most important part, which is that Cleaning ashtrays is really what the ashtray game seems to be about. You have aesthetics, price point, and then the third thing I would say in terms of should you buy an ashtray is how well is it going to clean? Because the reality is that most ashtrays, and even if you were using, say, a glass, will collect the ash. The question becomes how well can you clean it? And in the case of this, you can clean it well, it just takes a very long time. So you have your cigar, you're done with your cigar, you get your to the trash can and you take the ashtray, you dump it like this, the cigar goes out in the trash can, great. So then you you know shake it, take the top piece off, shake the bowl, get your cloth, clean the bowl. So in terms of cleaning the bowl out, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you've got uh, these edges which protrude outwards, so that helps. Unfortunately, this isn't round, like the, the corners are rounded, but they're still pretty sharp angles and they're quite small. And ash seems to get stuck in here, not big chunks of it, but little small pieces. And so that, you know, frustrates me and I clean that out. This takes a lot longer than cleaning a bowl, but you're not even close to being done at this point, because now you've got this piece right here. Obviously, once again, don't use a flare, but let's say you smoked your cigar and you only used this piece of the ashtray. Well, that's great, because that means that you should only have smoke, or, or sorry, ash in this you know, one column, right? So you clean the column, you put your cloth in here, 
But then you've also got to clean the sides of, of the sort of peaks right here, as well as the valleys. And then you're like, okay, I got to be done at this point, right? Well, no, because the whole point of the ashtray is that the ash falls through the openings. So now you got to take your cloth and it's almost like cleaning a ring and you got to clean out the openings. However, as the pictures show, ash seems to go everywhere and most people aren't going to have enough discipline to, to pick up their cigar and put it exactly in the same place that they picked it up from. So if you're like me and you place your cigar, say here, and then the next time it's here, and then it's over here, and then for some reason it's here. Ash goes everywhere. And so now you've got to clean out all 16 openings, all the peaks, all the valleys, the bottom piece, and then you're finally done. Is it the world's toughest job? Absolutely not. Is it gonna take you longer than a minute to kind of clean this to what most people would consider to be satisfactory? Definitely, it's gonna probably take you 90 seconds. And 90 seconds to clean an ashtray is substantially longer than it would take to clean most ashtrays, really any other ashtray I can think of outside of ones that have leather and, and multiple materials that have to get special cleaning themselves. And so, despite the fact that these are, outside of roadside flares, relatively indestructible, and despite the fact that they are an iconic design and they're in colors, um, and that they are only $20 at the absolute maximum price point, I don't think I'm gonna continue to use them. Uh, we have a lot of other ashtrays here at the office, and none of them take anywhere close to this amount of time to clean them. And for what it's worth, that Nat Sherman ashtray that's eight times the price, is maybe a little bit easier to clean, at least just the metal piece. The metal seems to not hold on to the ash as much, but everything else is pretty much the same story. I don't know how the people at Nat Sherman, uh, the townhouse, the retail employees who have to clean out the lounge, how they deal with those ashtrays on an hourly basis, because they, to me, they just make the biggest amounts of mess of any ashtray at this point I think I've ever seen. But they've been around for a while and presumably using those ashtrays for quite a while. If you want to learn more about the ashtrays, it, I know it boggles the mind, but there is actually more in the written review, including some background about who maybe invented them and vintage versions of that ashtray. Um, I would recommend doing so. But for me, I'm going to go back to a more simple bowl style ashtray going forward. If you'd like to learn more about ashtrays for some reason, uh, or any cigar accessory, whether it's lighters, cutters, humidors, humidification products, and more, you can check out halfwheel.com. And obviously, if you want to learn more about cigars and particularly about the cigar industry, I would highly recommend Half Wheel.